A ball is thrown directly downward with an initial speed of 8 meters per second from a height of 30 meters. After what time interval does it strike the ground? The first thing that we would do in solving this question is to draw ourselves a picture to help us understand the visualization of the question. We have the ball up here at an initial height of 30 meters. It's going to be thrown downward and finally it's going to reach the ground down below at 0 meters. And of course our job is to figure out how long that will take. So what we want to do is write down all of the known parameters, and that is our second step. Now, there is a bit of a trick to this question because it says that the ball was thrown directly downward, but then it gives us a speed of positive 8 meters per second. Now, speed is always a positive quantity, so that's not surprising that it's given as such. But because the ball is thrown downward, we have to make sure that we indicate that its initial velocity is actually negative 8 meters per second. So just make sure that you include that negative sign on the initial velocity because again, it's being thrown downward. We actually do not know the final velocity, so we'll leave that as a question mark. But for the acceleration, we know that the ball is essentially in free fall. Once it's released from the thrower's hand, it is falling downward towards the ground. And of course, the acceleration of a falling object here on Earth is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The time, again, we don't know. That's actually what we're looking for, so we might want to put a circle or a bubble around that one. And then we come to the change in y, which is the change in the ball's vertical position. And it might be helpful to remember that for the change in y, just like for the change in x, you can write that as the final y coordinate minus the initial y coordinate. Now, let's go back to the picture. We can see that the initial y coordinate, where the ball is located initially, is this value right here. So in other words, the y initial is equal to 30 meters. And then once the ball reaches the ground, the final y coordinate is 0 meters. And the reason that that's useful is because if we plug those in, we take the final y coordinate of 0 meters and subtract the initial y coordinate of 30 meters, we can see that delta y, which is the change in the position, is actually negative 30 meters. And a lot of students, when they try to solve this problem, they forget that the displacement or the change in position is negative. And indeed, we've shown that that is the case. So now we've listed all the known parameters. The third thing to do, of course, is to select the appropriate one-dimensional kinematics equation. Now, we know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the displacement, and we are looking for the time. So in other words, the final velocity is not part of our concern right here. So what we could do is cross out any equation that contains the final velocity because we're not really interested in it. So that would be the first and the third equation leaving us with the second equation, which is the correct one. Keep in mind that it's written in terms of delta x rather than delta y, but it's the same equation. So we'll write delta y is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one half acceleration times squared. And then we'll fill in our known values. So the displacement again was negative 30. We're going to omit units for the clarity of the algebra, but just keep in mind that the units should be technically plugged in. So we have negative 30 meters equals the initial velocity, which was the negative 8 meters per second, multiplied by the time, which we are looking for, plus 1 half times the acceleration of negative 9.8 times the time squared. Now what we'll do is simplify a little bit here. So we can multiply the 1 half by the negative 9.8. That's going to give us negative 4.9 t squared. Right here we have negative 8 times t and this is all equal to negative 30. Now, we have ourselves, unfortunately, a quadratic formula. It's quadratic because it contains our variable squared along with our variable raised to the power of 1. So this is a quadratic equation. We're going to need to use the quadratic formula to solve it. So perhaps the easiest thing to do here would be to add 30 over to the right-hand side. The left side becomes 0. And then if we rearrange the terms in standard order, we have negative 4.9t squared minus 8t plus 30. Now, of course, we all recall the quadratic formula. Let's write that down. There we have it. And usually it's a good idea to write down the values of a, b, and c before you begin to plug in. So this number right here in front of the t squared, that's our a. This negative 8, which is in front of the t, is our b. And then the positive 30 is our c. So let's go ahead and plug those values into the quadratic formula. So there are the values plugged in. Then the next thing that you'd want to do on your calculator most likely is simplify the contents underneath the square root symbol. 
Also notice you have a negative negative eight here, so that's gonna become positive eight plus or minus. You have the square root of 652. And then on the bottom, you have two times negative 4.9, which is negative 9.8. And then basically you have to split this into two separate answers. You're going to get T is equal to eight plus the square root of 652, all divided by negative 9.8 or you'll get t is equal to eight minus the square root of 652 divided by negative 9.8. Now, if you work these out individually, the first one comes out to be negative 3.42 seconds. The second one turns out to be positive 1.79 seconds. And then you ask yourself which value of time makes the most physical sense here. And of course, it would be the positive time. In general, in these physics questions, negative time will have no meaning. So we can reject that answer and report the final answer to be 1.79 seconds.